This is KGW News at Sunrise. This morning, President Trump is waking up in the White House while still being treated for COVID-19. But some doctors, including a local OHSU doctor, are worried about how he's now characterizing the virus. We're going to break down what she's saying and why they're concerned. Also one on one with Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler as he faces a tough reelection bid. This morning we're talking about Portland's homeless crisis and what the mayor is pushing for to help people living on the streets. And we're also making a little room for food on this morning's show, a fall favorite. Not pumpkin people. <laughs> we're, we're talking pizza. <laughs> Did you know October is National Pizza Month? So we have a new Drew and You to help celebrate. Fall favorite, that is year round. <laughs> you bet, <laughs> for Good sure. Morning. <laughs> Good morning, thank you for waking up with us on this Tuesday. Let's get right to Rod Hill now for a check of your weather forecast. Good morning. Good morning, I know it took a while, but all that clear sky uh, action we had in the afternoon bumped Portland to 75 yesterday, and we have a chance to be even warmer this afternoon. Now, good visibility in the city this morning. We're at 56 degrees. We're watching for some fog pockets. So far, the only thing I've seen is down in Yamhill County, and then also once you get just south of Albany. Otherwise, for the time being, it's all clear. 67 at lunchtime, 78 at 5 p.m., maybe 80 where you are. The seven day coming up shortly. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. That's the message from President Trump shortly after his release from the hospital yesterday, just three days after the president came down with a fever and a blood oxygen level alarming enough to require the hospital stay. He is back at the White House this morning and the president facing a lot of backlash for this moment when he returned to the White House and took off his mask for that photo op. Many worry he could be downplaying serious concerns about his recovery and the virus itself. While the president's doctor cleared him to leave, there are still no answers on whether his lung scans show signs of pneumonia. The doctors who will continue to treat the president say he'll still need careful monitoring. Though he may not entirely be out of the woods yet, there's nothing that's being done upstairs here that we can't safely uh, conduct down uh, home. So far, 14 people tied to the White House or the Trump campaign have tested positive. The latest is Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany and two of her staff. Well, a doctor on the front lines from OHSU is criticizing how President Trump is handling COVID-19. She says the disease is a lot more serious than he's making it out to be. Clerkley is live this morning for us with more on her concerns. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Nina. Dr. Esther Chu is, at, is also an assistant professor at OHSU and on the front lines, like you said. And she says it's hard to piece together exactly what's going on with the president. As reports say he's doing well, but medical reports show information that's concerning. Dr. Chu is also critical of how the doctors have shared updates on the president, saying they lacked clarity and important specifics. She also thinks that when the president tweeted about not being afraid of COVID, it downplayed the risk of a disease that has killed over 210,000 people in the U.S. She wants everyone to stay on guard and remember that this is a serious health crisis. And I also worry that it will encourage a lot of reckless behavior in terms of people pulling back from even the inadequate public health measures we've been doing to contain it. Um, and uh, and it, it was worrisome and disappointing. Dr. Chu says the most severe symptoms can come more than a week into the illness, like in the case of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, and that is the same time frame where the president is right now as, re as he returns to the White House. And Dr. Chu says that it will take some time uh, before the president is fully, or we can say the president has, is fully recovered. Nina. All right, Brian, thank you. Well, with multiple prominent politicians testing positive for COVID, there's been a lot of talk about who's quarantining and who's isolating right now. So what's the difference between those two? Jason Puckett has our Verify. 
There are now many people in President Trump's inner circle that have tested positive for COVID-19. While we don't know exactly where they all got the virus or who initially spread it, the photos from the Rose Garden last week during the nomination announcement of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court show many who've tested positive in close proximity, including President Trump, First Lady Melania Trump, Senator Mike Lee, Senator Tom Tillis, Kellyanne Conway, Notre Dame President Reverend John Jenkins, Chris Christie, Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany. Now, so far, VP Mike Pence and most of this front left row have tested negative. And with this many politicians sick, we wanted to revisit the official guidelines for quarantining and isolating if you're sick. First, what's the difference between quarantine and isolation? Well, according to the CDC, isolation is when someone who is sick or tested positive for COVID purposefully stays away from others, quote, even in their own home. Now, the CDC recommends you isolate for at least 10 days after symptoms first appear and until you go at least 24 hours without a fever. They also say people who test positive but may not have symptoms should still isolate themselves for at least 10 days. Then there's quarantining. Now, this is for people who aren't sick and have not tested positive but have recently come in contact with someone who does have COVID-19. CDC guidelines for quarantine say to stay home for 14 days, check your temperature twice a day, and watch for symptoms of COVID-19. Now, in response to these cases in the government, the Senate has delayed their floor proceedings until October 19th, and Attorney General William Barr is quarantining right now. But VP Mike Pence is not currently quarantining. His physician put out this statement saying, quote, the vice president is not considered a close contact with any individuals who've tested positive for COVID. Folks, if you've got any other questions you want us to look into, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Well, when it comes to Portland's homeless crisis, Mayor Ted Wheeler is pushing for more camps to help people living on the streets. We spoke with the mayor one-on-one, -on -one and he tells us he's actually scouting out properties and neighborhoods in the city where these camps could be built. Taxpayers in Portland and Multnomah County already spend more than $70 million a year paying for homeless services. And while he runs for re-election this month, Wheeler says he's asking neighborhoods to help out. And we're also working with neighborhoods and others to find managed camp sites where people would access, have access to water and hygiene, toilets, and potentially services to help get them off and keep them off the streets. Tents seem to be everywhere right now, especially downtown. But according to the latest point in time count, Tax dollars have helped 12,000 people stay in their homes through rent assistance. 1,300 affordable housing units have also been built since 2017. So we mentioned the mayor's re-election campaign. He's facing off against Sarah Iannarone, and a new poll shows the challenger has the edge right now amongst voters. The Willamette Week first reported these new poll numbers from the company DHM Research. 41% of surveyed voters were for Iannarone, 30% were for Wheeler. The other 29% of voters who participated in this poll say they're either writing in a candidate or they're still undecided. Teresa Rayford of Don't Shoot PDX is the focus of a very vocal writing campaign, although she's not even actually campaigning. Wheeler and Iannarone will meet in a debate this week hosted by KGW and The Oregonian. You can watch it right here on KGW or on our website starting at 7 p.m. Thursday night. So that is Thursday night, Rod Hill. This, of course, is Tuesday. And uh, it looks like if we warm up enough, you say we could be reaching our last 80 degree day of 2020. Yeah, so we're right on the edge of could there be a couple spots at 80 today and we don't really see anything in the forecast charts out over the next couple of weeks that would give us a good chance to hit 80. So maybe this is the last run for the money, as they say. All right, here we are this morning. I mentioned earlier we are watching some fog in a, just a couple spots. There's Tillamook. There's also been some fog not showing up on this map, but around McMinnville. And then you can see the fog down south of Albany. Um, and, you know, it could be picking up, maybe becoming foggy at your house, if you will, between now and say about seven this morning. So other than that, we'll see a beautiful clear sky day. 46 in Battleground, 54 out in Hillsboro, 46 out in Sandy. And if you're in the flats of the valley, the colder your temperature, the better the chance that you'll see some of that developing fog. For example, upper 40s right now in Kaiser and Salem. So we'll see if you develop it. Otherwise, the forecast is amazing. Beautiful sunshine today. 
warming up into the mid to upper 70s on average. This shows 79 big winds up in McMinnville. Northeast winds 5 to 10 miles per hour and uh, warm up through southwest Washington as well. There's Vancouver at 78 and battleground at 77 degrees. So I'm saying 78. We could hit 80. We'll see. Yesterday it was 75. We think we'll be at least a little bit warmer than that. Still nice tomorrow. I still think Thursday is likely dry. A few showers become possible Friday. And then hours of steady rain Friday overnight through Saturday morning. Some forecast smiles suggest that could be upwards of an inch of rain here in the valley. So that definitely looks to be a pretty good soaker to start the weekend, guys. Sure sounds like it. Rod, thanks. This morning, there's some questions surrounding one of the largest wildfires in Oregon. Yeah, our Kyle Aboshi digs into claims about how the Beachy Creek fire started and spread. And I talked to him for a preview of that investigation coming up. And later on, Batman, Belle, and the Man of Steel. They're spreading cheer to children displaced by the wildfires. We introduce you to the woman who captured the special moment. <laughs> 